here's the thing. I don't know if you saw this new study about how children who grow up, children with both parents always do better in life than than children with a single parent. But this is I've what heard the, it, but I did. But, I've never seen the study, but I've but heard people reference it. There's a new study it. out that says children that grow up with the father actually do equally as well as children that grow up with both parents. I believe that. Is this uh, in Bitches Ain't Shit Digest? Is that the? <laughs> I don't know if that was the magazine, That's but it, it sounds like they might. They have. definitely republished it, if anything. <laughs> but I don't know if they did the original study. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Chuck Nice. He's here, and we discuss women be out of pocket, the double standard of being a dad, ageism for me, and why you always have to be honest. This yeah, is a the- goodie. That's right. We're getting a lot of good stuff. But if you love the show, want to keep supporting the show, uh, we do all our bonus content and our listener mail over at patreon.com slash manschool202. That's your way to support the show and keep the show going. You get bonus content every week. Uh, This week, we continue our conversation with Chuck Nice as we discuss the truth in... Uh, as we discuss the truth in the confines of race, uh, more on the Chuck, uh, Chris Rock, Will Smith thing, maintaining control in heated situations, and why you can't have liars in society. Uh, it's a really good show. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. Plus, if you want to uh, get a relationship consultation, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And if you want a consultation from Dante, you can go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Uh, yo, 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 what up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do to sexual revolution? Being podcasted, and I am truly excited. Now, I know I've said that 570 times before, but this mm. time... I really mean I got a really special guest, good friend of mine. But first and foremost, Harry, what's popping? You good? You ready Man, to rock? life, life is uh, life is as sweet as you're willing to make it, and I'm trying to make it sweet because I like that shit sweet. So it's, it's sweet. I sweet think it's gonna tea. give me diabetes. I gotta actually, I gotta cool it down. It's so sweet. It's, your life's so sweet that you can get diabetes. You you might as well let it happen, baby. Lose a foot. That's Take right. Foot, <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> That's positive, right? Put that on a bumper sticker. I want to be blind with no feet. You know what I mean? No, that's what I'm for. Um, let me introduce my guest. And then uh, when I say this, you know, I, it's hard because I'm so full of shit often. But this hmm. dude is my good friend. Uh, love this dude to death. Um, don't see him nearly enough. Don't speak to him nearly enough. So it's really, I'm excited to have him on. Um just great done everything comedy central this that the other talk shows good day new york whatever blah, 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 whatever give it up for my boy chuck nice y'all what up chuck what up nice. what up what up how you feeling man let me tell you something because you wait know a minute something- let me just before you because i know it's your show but i just gotta yeah, yeah. i gotta acknowledge this get your balls back <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yo, that's that's tight. I like that. Thank get you, you, get your balls back. Thank you, brother. <laughs> it's a problem. You don't know how many people are missing them. They're missing, They're missing them. Just missing them. I ain't, I ain't never had that. I've never experienced that. So a lot I'm, of dudes, they look down and they go, uh, uh, "What happened to my balls? Yeah, ooh, what happened? Ooh. Oh, somebody's good. Somebody um, is good. Yeah. <laughs> I was dating this chick, and I go. It's well, like the magician that takes your watch. <laughs> 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 There it is. Then she just pulls my balls out from some behind some little young girl's ears, like a little bit. So, um, I always think of when they go missing. I'm like this was an inside job. I don't know who did this. <laughs> we got to get the cameras and look at this, but this was clearly inside. I remember I was dating this girl one time, and I, and and she was like, "And why didn't you call me?" Right? And I I stopped. I I took my wallet out and I. Looked at my license and then I, I reached in my pants. I was like, "Oh no!" They, she's like, "What are you doing?" I was I was just checking my license to see my age, and right. then I wanted to make sure that my balls was in my because you talking to me like I don't like they was missing. I don't right. I don't know what the fuck. You That's so funny, man. That's the what you just reminded me of. Oh man, what was this girl's name? I used to work in an office once, and 
was a company called HMA. I'll never forget. Right. Donna, Donna. I think that was her name. Donna, yeah. yeah. Really, really cute girl. Smoker. Oh, such a, such a cutie. And, you know, I had a boyfriend, but, you know, I used to make my little, you know, I used to float the balloons. You know what I mean? Okay. I would float the balloons, you know. But, I mean, she needed relief. She needed right. some relief. Yeah. I mean. So, you know, and then, um, but then uh, she saw me on the street uh, with a girl I was dating mm. who uh, happened to be Italian. Uh, I never have been a person who put much stock in uh, skin color as a metric for anything. Right. But, but uh, except racism. Uh, <laughs> well, no, but, no, yeah, something yeah, little yeah, like that. Something I mean. little like that, yeah. But yeah. anyway, so she, the next day at work, she came at me, and I mean came at me hard, man, talking about how uh, this is why we can't have anybody because, you know, there's good brothers out here who, uh, you know, anybody time y'all got something on the ball, y'all end up with, you know, somebody other than a sister and this, that. And now, mind you, she, you had, a boyfriend. Been, she had, uh, had a boyfriend and was deflecting my advancements. Uh -huh. For you know the whole time that I knew her, and um, oh, wait, were you smashing or you wasn't? Smashing? No, 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 no. I was just I would make it known that, that if she it. was ever interested, right. that this would be. But right. I knew she had a boyfriend, so I never really right. went after it. Right. Okay, I was because it's not worth it. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I, there was too much other stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> so I, um, when she got done, I just sat and took it. And she, right. it was it was a diatribe. Uh -huh. It was it was a soliloquy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, a teleprompter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she might as well. Have. I was like, wow. She got was, that that Oscar wrap up music, but she kept yeah, going and did kept going. You kept know, going. And, yeah. She got the Oscar wrap up, and then she went seventy four years here, and just. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, but, "I know, I know, I'm forgetting somebody." Exactly. But um, if I did, I mean, go ahead. So. So I said, uh, when she was done, I was like, I was like, that is very interesting. And uh, I'm willing to put everything you said into action. So Friday after work, we can either have a drink first or we can just go straight back to my place. Uh -huh. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm saying Friday. That's tomorrow, tomorrow. after work. Okay. We can either go have a drink first, you know, relax a little bit, talk, or we could just go straight back to my place. Right. And she was like, what are you talking about? I was like, clearly, you Charlie. want to fuck me. Right. Clearly, what you are saying is mm -hmm. that you are upset about who I am fucking, which means that you must, you must want me and I'm down to do that. Right. And all that other stuff you said, I will put into action. The on moment, Friday. on the Friday. moment, on Friday. <laughs> so we good, right? So Friday, right? <laughs> and what did she say? <laughs> and she walked away. <laughs> Fair enough. And guess what? I was okay with that too. Yeah. You know, I was insane. okay. Insane, the audacity. Audacity ain't the word. Yes. Actually, audacity is the word. It's yeah. the perfect word, you know? <laughs> um, I was actually thinking, so here's a, two things. Um... I just got my I just got my bike uh, serviced. Oh, I sweet! Went, so I and I was riding home, and I was thinking about you today because you know the booker, the got books the show. Right. I don't always know who's coming on until like until I get the text message, and then I was thinking about you today. Didn't even know at first the early this morning because I got up this morning, went to go get it, and then when I saw you, I was like, oh, I was just thinking about this motherfucker. Dante, every day. you're saying this is a religious miracle. Is. I know you. Is this, are you saying it is. this it's, is one of those uh, Jewish miracles that we're going to do a holiday around? It's stigmata. This is stigmata. <laughs> so, Chuck over. Okay. Yeah, was, <laughs> it's Chuck over, over baby. Chuck over. Took, uh, as Jay-Z would put it, the takeover. So, um, yeah. Nah, man. Yeah. It's, uh, you rode today? Because it's a beautiful day, man. I just for, brought it home, but it was just, you know, you like I hadn't rode it in a while, and I started up the, um, I, I bought a new tender. I bought this from this company called Noco. Which is dope. I'll send you the link, but it, it, you can you can actually refurbish batteries with this tender. Oh, nice! So if the battery goes dead, they has a, a mode where it 
it it, it kind of reconditions the bad, but I don't want to get into that. But okay, I'll, I'll yeah, because you know, yeah, we'll we'll talk about. It. Yeah. We could do the yeah. whole podcast on, on, motorcycles, on, on motorcycles, y'all. Yeah, y'all yeah. don't even know. We we could do yeah. that, you know. So I'm driving back on the in the Ducat. The sun is out. And I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta call my man Chuck and see what's what's going on, right? Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I might. I'm trying to think about because I, I, I got a big decision to make. And now you, the man to talk to about this, because I know that you like both of these things. Yeah. So you know, I'm looking at the DFL, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, but you know, I don't want to give up my 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 little, you know, Bonnie, Bonnie my Bonnie. Yeah. I'm not trying to get that up. I'm just trying to. But you know what? It's fun. But now that I'm back to riding. I kind of miss that lightweight, powerful, you know, yeah. punch that you get on a duck. So yeah. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the DFL. So I'm like, okay, I want to look at that, but I can only do one of these things right now, unless by some miracle mm -hmm. I get a freaking TV show or some, some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Some deal pops through, you know, but the other thing is I'm without a car right now. Okay. So it's either do I just continue to drive? Not, the Bonnie. You know, I the, the, right what I got the Bonnie uh, or do I already I, got the answer for you? Or Here's do I get I'm, wait? Or do I get an X six because that is what I'm looking at? I like the X six. I'm looking at the X six, so do it's like, like the X six. Um, but you're gonna keep the Bonnie. I'm keeping the Bonnie no matter what. Here's what I would here's what I would do. I would get the X6. I would sell the Bonnie. Ooh. And I would get hold on. Oh. And I would get the D of Val, not the S. Okay. I would get the D of Val carbon. So I then I has the same racing posture as the uh, Bonnie. As the Bonnie, yeah. Without the without the forward controls. And I would I would that's what I would do. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. that's actually uh, that's a that's a damn good plan. Actually, yeah. that's a damn good plan. I like you got, it. You I, still got you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be upset with the with the Ducat. Nope. But you if you get the 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 the, the carbon with the pedals underneath, so that you're not cruise. It's not the cruise. It's you. You'll never ride. You won't ride the Bonnie if you have that. Right, right, and you're right. You're right because the truth yeah. is that the 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 Bonnie is an emotional attachment. Yeah. That's that's all there is to it. Because yeah. once once I get the 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 duck, I'm not going. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to ride it. I'm not going to be. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I'm going to be on that. I'm going to be on gonna, that. You're not going to get off a of three. Oh, that's good 13, advice, man. Thirteen sixty five, and then get on. The, you're just not going to do it yeah. anyway. So that, that's good advice. Good advice. Good advice. I knew is, I was talking to the right man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, he is. Um, so we were talking about you were talking about the state of affairs. You were getting ready to get into uh, relationship stuff, state of affairs. You were oh, well, getting, we before I, before yeah, we yeah. jumped on, with, yeah, you yeah. know, with the people that are yeah, watching yeah, yeah. and listening. Yeah, you know, we were talking about you know sometimes when things go south and you need a final solution in a relationship, you know, and you might have to, you know, you might have to just cut things. Cut, they say. A uh, fish a cut bait, <laughs> well, you yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but you were talking about. You said, like, when my wife took my son. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And I was saying, like, those words, just hearing them. Yeah. Those words, my like my chest yeah. seized up right. just hearing you say that. You know yeah. what I mean? That idea. And um, I was about to say, I'm, you know, I'm a little salty about the fact that in society there is a presumption that uh, somehow we could never take a child away from a woman. But yet it is just, you know, it, it's like a every day. Every day, it's like putting on a pair of pants. It's, like it's, it's like standard. it's like putting on it, socks. It has literally become the it's, standard. This is for taking a, taking away a child from the from the Here's father. The you, As if we don't feel the same damn yeah. way that they feel. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Well, let me ask you this: Did you did you Dante, see? Did you raise you it up a little bit? Sorry, the the mic is a little low. Me? Yeah, yeah, you're a little bit low, but there we go. 
Uh, testing one, two. Yeah, yeah that's bad. much better. Um, here's here's the thing. I don't know if you saw this new study about how children who grow up, children with both parents always do better in life than than children with a single parent. But this is I've what heard the, it, but I did. But, I've never seen the study, but I've but heard people a new reference study it. out that says children that grow up with the father actually do equally as well as children that grow up with both parents. I believe that. Is this uh, in Bitches Ain't Shit Digest? Is that the... <laughs> I don't know if that was the magazine, That's but it, it sounds like they might They have. definitely republished it, if anything, <laughs> but I don't know if they did the original study. See, I, I, gotta, I gotta rely on Harry because he does he does the research and the production on this thing, so if he says it was Bitches Ain't Shit, I, I gotta go with that. You know what I'm saying? I, I gotta go with that. <laughs> so, um... And, and what they, you know, what they were saying is that, you know, single parented uh, homes w with just the mother, the women end up more, the, the girls end up more promiscuous and the guys end up in jail um, more often than not. And I think that is, you uh, know, I, well, it's t it could be telling. I'm not sure the, you know, I don't know the uh, validity of the study, but I'd have to look at it. But from a personal philosophical standpoint yeah i could see it making sense because fathers what they try to do more than anything is lead their children to self-sufficiency if to you are that to, kind of man to prayer to prepare it, well right. if you if you i don't even think you even have to make that distinction because a father that takes the children that are that are readily willing to take the children on that. It already is that man. That's, right. that's, that's okay, it. so there you have it. So yeah. I think that fathers are, what their goal is, um, they look at the expression of love. Mm -hmm. Their metric for measuring the expression of love is how well have I prepared you for life? Self-sufficiency. Yeah, self-sufficiency. If you can leave my home and take care of yourself, yeah. then, I've then, then you know that I love you because I'm the one who prepared you for this. I'm the one who put you in this position. Yeah. And fathers who are active in their children's lives, the ones that, you know, are there, they're not there trying to helicopter parent or be, you know, hold their kids' hands, you know, or, you know, control every little part of their life. What they're there to do is, yo, like I used to do a joke where I would say, um, you know, the difference between me and my wife is, you know, she's like, baby, you hungry? Oh, you want, you, uh, mommy gonna make you a sandwich. You hungry? So, but me, I'm like, oh, you hungry? Okay, come on over here. Now I'm gonna show you how to make this sandwich one Fucking time. <laughs> One time, I'm going to show you how to make this sandwich. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, that at the end of her process. You better write it down because if you're not, okay. I'm not showing take, you again. Take it. Right. That's You'll right. You'll be a no sandwich eating motherfucker. Write it down and, and, and sketch art while you at it. Yeah. Sketch. Take some photos. Take the photos. <laughs> right. Diagram the whole deal. But I was like, at the end of her process, the kid has a sandwich. At the end of my process, I have unlimited sandwiches because mm -hmm. right, right. <laughs> I got a because I got a sandwich maker. Right, <laughs> that's and that's a, what I and created. A, and a and a kid of the, of today's ilk would videotape it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they would. <laughs> and store it. And store it. So, so you know, but yeah, so that 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 study could make some sense as far as I'm that, concerned. I mean, this is this is not even. I mean, like the, we're talking about the the. Um, you know the practice of the the child always staying with the mother. It's been that has been the case for so long. Um, the uh, that I think it's uh, you know this study even for this study to come through the this bombardment of these feminist ideas is something that has to be legitimate because they wouldn't even they wouldn't yeah, even yeah, be, yeah yeah they probably yeah I, I see what you're saying yeah. like it wouldn't be able to get any traction if it was bullshit yeah, you know yeah, what i mean yeah. so um, it's it's also an interesting thing that you um you know you you find that mother's love is is a lot of times where the confidence comes from but a lot of times that confidence is uh is is to the point where um it, it it's detrimental because the thing is the thing is well you start to think kids start to think that this is how it is this is how life is mm -hmm. I, uh, so my son's three i was in england and um 
I we do this. We watch this thing called the uh, uh, Coco Melon or whatever. You know the, the the thing that all the kids go crazy for. It. I put it on. He hears the noise. He comes running downstairs. He jumps on me. I'm laying on the couch. He jumps on me. We watch the phone. What he'll do sometimes is he'll take a chair, make like a night table. He'll put his juice there, his cookies. Right. He lays on me and we watch and he watches. Right. Just lays on my. Chair. That just sounds adorable. Right. Right. So. <laughs> He watches. He goes, he starts to reach for the juice. I grab the juice. I put it up to his mouth. We, he gets a sip. I hand him a cookie, right? So I go, this is time for, this is this is a teachable moment. So I go, uh, say, daddy, say, say juice, please, daddy. That's all I want him to say. You want the juice? You have whatever you want. I just want you to say, please. I want you to say, juice, please, daddy. He will not do it. Right? I which like is, him already. I right? like him already. <laughs> which, which is, you know, I, you know, I'm pissed off, but. I don't, I don't appreciate you making me daddy dependent. <laughs> you know who his daddy is. So let's, you know, I'm not. <laughs> We already know who his daddy is. Exactly. Well, you can't listen. You can't be mad at him for what you put in him. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Or what I put in her. Right. Oh, right. 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 <laughs> so, so, um, <clears throat> I cut off the video. He cry, uh, cries, gets up, and he leaves. Right. Goes upstairs to play with his game because he's he's just he ain't gonna he's, he ain't gonna f with me. Yeah, because, he don't want to do it, right? Right. So I'm there. I wait till he gets upstairs. I play the theme song again. He comes <laughs> running downstairs, jumps on me. This we're back at square one. He, we're watching the thing. He goes to reach for the juice. I go, Daddy, juice, please. He goes, ain't doing it. I cut it off. He Does leaves. he try to grab for the juice too? Anyway, yeah. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Oh yeah, and I push it out of out of reach. I cut it off. He cries, not even cries. Like yeah, and he leaves. I right, f you upstairs. Soon as I see him get all the way, and I don't hear no steps, I play the theme song. He comes in, <laughs> ask me how, ask me how long, how many times I had to do it before he said. Daddy, uh, juice. juice, please, Daddy. Yeah, I don't. How, how many times? He never said it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and we did this for an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah, back and <laughs> forth, back and forth, back and forth, and um, to the point where uh, it was getting late. Right, <laughs> it was getting late. I put the, I played the theme. You did song. it till the sun went down. The sun went down, past his bedtime. His mother comes down and she goes, oh, don't play the song. I'm putting him to bed. Right? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So now here's the thing. She put him she put him to bed because she couldn't deal with the fact that he wasn't getting what he wanted. Right. And he was complaining about it. So to save, so all of a sudden he had to go to bed, but, but really what she was doing was saving him from my tyranny, right? <laughs> the tyranny of the fact that I wanted him to say, daddy juice, please. Right. 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 And then I realized I'm in England spending 10, 15 days with him. Right. Um, when I leave, it's going to go right back to what it gonna, was. Yeah. So I'm now I'm wasting time doing this when I don't I can't really make the impact on him that I want to make the impact on. Well, that was wise. I mean, listen, that's a wise observation and recognition to have because yeah. uh, the truth is, you know, like you say, ten fifteen days, mm-hmm. you're not you're not going to change anything with that. But yeah. you know, the great thing is, um, I think when when they recognize who you are, yes. Th- then what happens is uh, a, a, a different set of motivations kick in as they get yeah. older. Yeah. You know, I yeah. look at my son and, you know, the kid, It's he's at an age now where, of course, I'm not supposed to know shit. Mm-hmm. You know, he's looking at me like, you know, you, you think you're so great, you know, and... uh I've let him how, know. How old is he? Oh, he's 17 now. 
Oh, okay. So he don't really... He, he, he's supposed to feel these things. He's supposed to be... But let me ask you this. How does, she, how does he quantify that when the fact that you're on TV... And well, then you, there's a visible. Uh, uh, you, you understand uh, what I'm saying? Exactly. Well, that's the point. So the fact is that, you know, I understand where he's coming from. You know, right. first of all, it's not malicious. It's not like he's mad well, at me. And we have a great relationship. It's just know? being a kid. It's just rebellious. It's just him being. Yeah. He has to rebel. Yeah. And it, you know, we all had to. You know sure. what I mean? It's what allows you to leave your parents and go do your own thing. If you never rebelled against your parents, you'd be like, oh, you got, hey, morning, guys. You'd be like 40. <laughs> morning, guys. How'd you sleep? Huh? Everybody okay? Huh? huh? I don't know. Mom, you sounded a little uncomfortable last night. Hope you're all right. You know, I told you about that, uh, uh, you know, uh, having dairy before bed. You know, like you can't, you know, the fact is that the reason why you rebel is because you want to assert your independence. You want to be your own man. And he wants to be his own man. You know, once he said to me, he was like, uh, all of my friends like you. <laughs> <laughs> In a question form, he's like, "No, they like, like you. I, like I don't was, get yeah, it. Exactly, like, like in disgust. Like yeah. he was, like he was pissed. How, like these dudes have no taste at all. Yeah, he was like, right. oh, all of my friends, all yeah. of them, like you. <laughs> so you know, um, but you know, that's you know, the, Shug, the fact was, is, when you were young, what was your biggest rebellion when you were a kid? What me? You think? Yeah. How did oh, you rebel? My. Oh, None. let's. <laughs> None. Well, I know this because we we so Chuck's been on the show before, and we we would delve. And I, I was talking about when you went on before. We, you know, I think we dug up some stuff. We dug up. If you, I don't know if you remember, we dug up some stuff that was interesting. Kind of learned a little bit about each other a little. Okay, more. yeah. You remember? You I don't, don't know remember. if I remember though. Okay, so you talked about how. Uh, you talked about how your parents, your dad specifically, was um, very uh, controlling and it's rigid. Oh, and oh, my dad, yeah, my dad was an authoritarian, straight yeah. up. Yeah. I mean, a man did not play around. He was authoritarian. But my father was also a dichotomy. My father, what, what people now call, you know, a hustler, mm -hmm. back in the day, that was a man who ran a business on and in the streets. Right. That was a hustler. Right. Okay. And it could be anything from numbers running to drug Drugs. dealer to oh. pimping. It, it, to, it, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you know, the, the, you know, the way we first, yeah. you know, first of all, I hate when I hear this, but you know, like I got love for the streets when I hear, mm. you know, people say, I'm like, shut up. You, you, you don't know what you're talking about because right. you will never see an OG talk about their love for the streets. No. And what they will tell you is I ain't got no love for the streets because the streets ain't got no love for me. Okay. Oh, really? The streets yeah. is where I'm out here surviving. I'm yeah. on these streets because I got to survive. And not because I got I had options. I wouldn't right. have been there. That's right. right. If I had other options, I wouldn't have been there. So my father made other options for himself. Became a businessman, you know, owned, started printing companies and, you know, did OK for himself. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, right. But he was always <laughs> he was always this dude in, in who was like a cross between like yeah. Mr. Suburban Legit. Yeah. And a Curtis Mayfield song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like that's who he was, man. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, he was um, he was a hard, hard. Hard to, to, right. to hard to, to be your father. That's right, sure. right. Um, it, it's it's interesting because you know, like I, I I'm I'm not. It's funny because we 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 were talking uh, we we're talking to Florentine and he you know he's got a 12 year old that he's raising now and we're just talking about the age of uh, he's 58. I'm 56. How old are you now, Chuck? I'm uh, 50. Right. <laughs> no, I'm 50. Right. Okay, so it's yeah. but but it, it, it's funny because on the on, in, in in my act I say I'm 46, but I've been saying that for three years now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll happen. It's, It'll it's, sneak I mean, up on you. So let me ask you this: Why do you think you need to say that? Um, you know, I don't 
but one it it fits. Why you, know you what say I mean? that? Well, because that's what that's the age that people attach to me. Right, but why do you why do you not why are you not honest about what it is? I mean, what makes you feel like that you have to bend or cater? Oh, the business, the business, that's all. To be honest, it's nothing personal because I mean, you look at me and yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, it's yeah. like you know, the, the dude doesn't look his age, so the cl- right. it clearly can't be anything of that nature. Um, no, it's literally just because it 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 works for. Now, do uh, you think it still matters? Yes. Even now, yeah, yeah. I've actually had it. I've had it happen where I've seen the results of. Um, ageism in my own career, you know. Matter of fact, it happened last year where they were so super high on me for this project, and all of a sudden the trail just went cold. Like, and I mean, ice cold. Like I hit a brick wall, and I'm like, "What the hell?" And I thought that I said something to somebody because you know I got a mouth, and you know sometimes you make a joke, and you you are joking, but it's not. You know, right. it's you not a agree. joke to the person who hears it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I thought, and I've done that too. I did that to somebody at Comedy Central, and they still there, and they still don't like me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, my agent was real clear with me and very um, candid. He was just like, "Look, man, I'm just going to level with you. They uh, they wanted somebody younger, and they went with this too. And the, and the, guess what? The project ended up sucking, and it didn't work. And I and I was like, you know, they they picked somebody." who is a so-called influencer instead of a, a professional. Right, right. But So here's, here's my thing, though. Is that, was it really, the it w- was the difference that they wanted somebody 46 or did they want somebody no, who was 20? No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, they, 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 you know, uh, I'm sure they wanted somebody who looked like they were in their 20s to 30s, you know what I right, mean? So they that, didn't want a man anyway. They didn't they, want a man. Right. right, but but is that really ageism at its at its at it? I mean, it's, it is ageism. But what I'm saying is, is the difference in saying forty. So here's here's my thing. I always say this: if a guy lies, a guy's trying to talk to a girl, and he he's on these apps or whatever, and he goes he goes I'm right. five six, and then he lies and says he's really five four, right? Yeah, but that's what? that's that's see, but that's a different story. I know what you I know where you're going. I hate I shouldn't have cut you off. That was rude. No, no, it's I, fine. I, no, I apologize. I mean, this is about uh, you more than it is about me. Eh, no, nah, we're always talking. We're just right, talking. Right, Shit. Right, right. There, there's no show here, people. You don't even realize <laughs> this is me and D on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. You know what I mean? Seriously. Hold on, give me one second. What's my fucking... Hold on, let me pause it Stop. one second. Okay. Oh, we got the same microphone. So anyway, I think that, you know, the the difference is when you are trying to introduce yourself to somebody romantically and you say you're 5'10 and you're 5'6, that is so demonstrably, um, like, identifiable. Like, you can't say anything that you're not. You know, that's what I'm saying. You can't say anything that you're not because what you're doing is... Forget the misrepresentation. You're setting yourself up for failure because you're already creating a deficit. And you should never create a deficit for yourself. Like there's okay, enough there's explain enough to me, pe- explain to me what you mean by deficit in what way. Okay. So let's say that um I say that I am um full head of head, full head, like Full head of hair, right? Right. But really, I'm bald and I'm wearing a a, a glue on. Right. Right. So I got my glue on. So what I should never do is talk about my hair. Right. But a lot of times, because guys know that that is a sore spot for them in their own psyche, they will go out of their way to point out something about their hair. Mm hmm. And you don't want to do that because your hair, unless you're going straight up and say, yo, this ain't mine. If you ain't going to do that, 
right? right? This ain't mine, but it looks good. Okay. Right. If you're not going to do that, you've created right. a deficit because now you've created a misrepresentation. That's what I mean by deficit. Okay. Well, how do you? When uh, really you, you should. When really you just shouldn't be talking about your hair at all. Right. If but it, how look, do you? How do you see that different as saying you're 46 when you're older? Like, why do you not think that that is relevant? Um, because it's not for those purposes. You know what I mean? It's 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 for the purpose of perception. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure anybody listening right now wouldn't make them any difference. So you understand, like to to anyone watching us right now, it makes no difference to them that I'm four right. years older or younger. They right. do not care. Right. OK, what they care about is, is this dude funny? That's yeah. all. They care, right. We know this. Right. We oh, walk sure. out on stage and it's is he funny? That's it. So but perception wise in terms of the person making decisions because i'm still not at a place in my life or career where i have complete agency over things that i do and so okay. when it comes to the perception i would much rather even if that perception is slightly misrepresenting who i am i'd rather have that in my favor when the person is sitting there thinking about me than the other than the other way around because there are people who just hear you know which on in, eight, right uh, july 10th by the way is when it happens guys the big 50. uh mm -hmm. when, when when somebody hears that mm -hmm. they are like oh well we can't consider harry you want to get in on this because you know, I don't want to get too personal. Sure, into, I'll say but this. But you know that we, you know, we just I'll, had a thing. I'll and, say this: um, that even little lies snowball into something big. You know, I have found that it's just better to, you know, I've learned some painful lessons that it's better to constantly be honest about this stuff because it all snowballs into something else. And I believe it, that. And, but, but, but when it comes to this for professional purposes, here's where I make, draw the distinction. Um, your age is not even reported as a number. It's reported as a range. So that's right. why I don't really, I, you know, I don't look at it with great um, weight at all because you know you won't you don't you don't put it down like age you put age range so you know because that's what you want to be considered for now if i were to put on my resume age range 28 <laughs> right you right. know because well, <laughs> it's obvious that it's, right and, but i mean i know some i know some white boys that are 28 that don't that that, that don't look that look 50 55 yeah, yeah. so but so here's it, so there's two things that come into my mind. One of the things that, um, you know, I don't get along with my sister and she don't get along with me, but she always worked corporate America. And what I say is that her wearing braids and her natural hair was revolutionary oh, in, oh, the, uh, in the in, 90s. In the 90s, without a doubt. Yeah. She, she was a groundbreaking figure. Right, and and I would never call She's, her. She was probably also unemployed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she she was employed, but I'm was joking, always man. In, no, that's a joke. I'm, but no. I mean, but here's the thing: it was she did get bypassed by the blonde girl, of course. Get, but but I think that would have happened even <laughs> right even because not. the person with that mentality is going to do that. So, but the only reason why we've gotten to a place where where that is not the case in some industries right. is because somebody said unapologetically, this is how I'm wearing my hair. And Absolutely. had we have, and had we have not done that, I mean, that's why we call it revolutionary. Yeah, what the, exactly. And I also think because of the internet, the, the, the idiots who are making these decisions, a distinction between 46 and 56 or whatever the fuck it is, is not about them making the decision. I think we're also in a place right now where the gatekeepers no longer have the power in them anymore. The, this, this, now is there, very this is where you're right. Cause right now, yeah, you're right. It's people make their own, like it, it, people don't even care anymore for the most part, because all they really care about now is your social media. Right. You know, that's and what, you're, what and you're, it used to be a B to B to C, meaning business to business to customer. 
right um thing and now it's it's business to customer yeah and what's happening even you talking about comedy central comedy central fired everybody they create no new content and yep. so the fact that this person doesn't like you doesn't even matter because it doesn't matter anymore because they, they don't, don't even, even do specials anymore yeah, right i don't even i don't even know if they have a job i don't even know if that person is still working there right because so what i'm saying is you, you know and and harry and i was talking about this all morning about the, this how difficult it is to be honest because well because we, what what happens is even as even when you want to even try not to hurt people's feelings and telling white lies to not hurt them hurt their feelings is a form of being dishonest ah, well it's it's it, it depends on how you do it okay for instance um you know did you like did you like the show you know, um, if if somebody says, did you like the show, right? And you didn't like the show. There's something in the show that you did like, you know? And so you can answer what I do. You can think about that part of the show that you liked and answer. If somebody says, what did you think of my performance? I say to them, you know, are you sure you want me to answer that question? Exactly. That's exactly how I answer. Exactly. Are you sure you want me to answer that question? Because I'm, you know, I'm kind of critical and I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you exactly how I felt about it. You now, know? they're going to say, no, yes. no, I want to no, know. Because now they're curious. You're, 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 and, and guess and they're what? They're going to get this smoke. And now here's what you do. You lead with the best stuff that you can find about it. You lead with that. Right. Okay. Now, let me tell you something, people. If, if, you, if you say, I want it, yo, please tell me. I want to know what you think. If the answer comes back, well, first of all, you looked great. You're fucked. Right. <laughs> right, right. If that's what they lead with. Right, okay. Right. But the idea then is you lead with all the stuff that was good. And then the stuff that you didn't like, you find a very diplomatic and what I call dispassionate way to tell the person how you felt. Because if you do just lie, if you are dishonest about how you felt, one, they're gonna know. Because the discomfort that you're feeling while you're searching for the words to tell them how good they're not, Right. By telling them how good they are. They're right. going to feel that, and that's all they're going to remember. They're okay. not going to remember the compliment. They're not going to remember what you said. They're going to remember the discomfort that you both felt as you were searching for the lie to make them feel better. Okay. So here's here's where I want to push back on it, right? Go number ahead. one, Number one is I have, because of, I'm, I'm so consistent about who I am, and we, I mean, that's why I got love for you. And we, we all well, listen, we, we know who you are right, now. Come right, on. Right. Right. So <laughs> when somebody, people don't ask me unless they want to know. And, um, and I will go if somebody, if it's somebody new or something, I will at some point in time in the course of our friendship, I'll go, I will, they, they will hear this come out of my mouth. Right. Harry, you, I don't lie. I keep my word and I'm not and I and I approach life with the empathy that people know pe people have go through things that I don't go through. Absolutely. But I will oh, not great. lie for your benefit. Right. You yeah. are not important enough to me. Okay, see now that's where I stop. <laughs> <laughs> see, see now you just went see, but that's the difference. Now you know me. Yes. Okay. And everybody very diplomatic. I'm yes. very diplomatic. And everybody and people will say anybody in this business, if you ever hear somebody in this business say that guy's a dick, then you know for a fact that that person's a dick. Okay. That's the only way somebody thinks I'm a dick. Right. <laughs> okay. But, but I would also say to that is a certain level of dishonesty. The fact that they don't think that you're in. And let me say why. Okay. Why? Because yeah. I'm, I'm interested because I know who you are and you have very distinct ideals and opinions and stuff Big time. like that. When we're kicking it, you, you know, that's how I fuck and you let it fly. Right? right. Because guess what? You and I, first of all, you and I have a level of comfort and I know you enough that 
you are important enough. <laughs> Right to be, the, I'm important See, enough to be honest. Right, but, but guess I would what? say this. Go ahead. Nobody is important enough to not for me to be dishonest. But see, like, I'm not being dishonest. I'm being diplomatic. So, and there is a difference. Mm-hmm. I am. I I have developed uh, 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 the skill of being able to tell you what's what what I think needs to be said but not in a way where I think it might be offensive. Not that I'm worried about offending you because you can't go through life like that. And let me tell you why, because people are going to be offended and there is no good way to tell somebody the truth. The truth hurts. I don't care who it is, unless that truth is something very positive and complimentary. The truth hurts. Okay. And for most people who love the truth, they don't even want to hear the positive complimentary shit. No, it, it, it doesn't, even, good it doesn't even re- register with them. Because yeah. they're like, yeah, tell me something I don't fucking know. Okay? Right. So, you know, it's like, it's, it's, so what I'm saying is that, you know, I feel like certain people, I don't need you walking around upset because of me. Because I am not going to be thinking about you. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I'm not going to be thinking of me. Me neither. Right. But, I mean, I'm not gonna, right. but see, the difference is, you know, um, I, 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 I guess I, 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 it's not about uh, it's 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 that I guess it's because, you know, I I'm a very sensitive person. Like I'm super sensitive. Right. All right. But I've learned that that's me. Like, you know what I mean? I can't put that on you because I'm super sensitive. You know right, what right. I mean? And, but I know how it hurts to feel and hear things that you don't want to. And I don't want to be the source of that for somebody else. They're going to feel it and, and, and hear it anyway if they want. Um, maybe. Not a lot of times they don't. But and, and, and guess what? If, if, you can't, if you can't hear what I'm saying when I'm telling you the truth. You didn't want to hear it. You didn't want to hear it. And so it doesn't make a difference anyway, you know? So I might as well not have you walking around. Because let me tell you about the people that you tell them straight up and you're just as straight up as you can be. Because I'm still straight up. I'm just not, I'm just doing it in such a way where I, that what they say, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Yeah. I, 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 I do it that way. It's just a matter of style. And the reason why I do it that way is because the, the people that are mad at you when you tell them the truth, they will talk to themselves until they talk themselves right out of the truth that you gave them. Out of the truth that they That's gave right. Them? They will talk themselves out of the truth that you gave them, but still be mad at you. Find a way. Find a way to justify. Like, I'll, I'll, yeah, but somebody who's going to do that, I'm just not interested. I'm just not interested in fucking with somebody like that. So, for instance, Harry's known me for a long time. <laughs> hmm. Harry will not ask me unless he is ready to hear the truth, right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. But he values my opinion, the gravity of my opinion with him because of the fact that he knows that if I say something that's painful or hurtful or whatever is to him, he knows that I, I that I'm sincere. He knows that I'm saying something that needs to be said. There's things that I could critique that I don't think is important. But anything I say to him is so that his life is better in a way after that it's oh, done. These, after that conversation is done. Yeah, that it's definitely. better. Uh, hard uh, but, be, but, but, but see, it, that is called better the wounds of a friend than the kisses of an enemy. That's okay. what that's called. Right. Okay. And and okay. that's because the reason why you fuck with Harry in the first place is because he's got that mentality. Okay. See, if he well, did, I don't, you would, I you, don't think he did. I think I think what happens I didn't initially, is no. Oh, you really did? Okay. No, Not initially. Nobody does. No. no. I don't know no, because I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but Chuck, <laughs> that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, but Chuck, you fuck with me like that, and I think that, and I think the same way you fuck with me like that is because of the fact that you know. Be, so when I say, yo, that's my motherfucker, right? right? You, when I say that, there's no question of that. There's no question that if I mean that, the, with the intent that I say it, of course, nobody, because you, you're a man of your word. But right. see, but see, I would not be fucking with you otherwise if you was not a man of your word. 
I mean, and listen, we know a lot of people in this business, both of sure. us, all right? And there's a lot of people, you know, like I got love for, and there's some people where they just do not, they don't, I can't, oh man, I hate to say this, because see, this is not diplomatic, <laughs> but there are people that don't rate, and I don't care what show they have, and I don't care what fucking Ooh. agents they know, but you don't rate, and the reason you don't rate is because you're full of shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? You just, please. Because let me tell you something. You know, what I say, I do. And that's it. That, that's the end. I ain't got nothing else to say. Right. That's it. What I, I say, well, I, 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 I would say, and I say this. So, like, here I'm, I do, I, you know, when I do my consultations. Okay. The guys will call me up. And one of the things that I do is that I will not compromise. I don't, I, I love you, but I don't give a fuck about you. To the point where I'm going to compromise my integrity or my truth for you. Okay. Even to the point where I've told guys, I'm going to tell you the truth. Um, and if you if you don't want to hear the truth, then you, you're the wrong. I, and not only that, but if you're looking for me to lie to you, I'll give you your money back. I'll go take, take your money back. Because, and not That's because... It's not because of the it's the but the the point is, you know, I, I'm I'm an atheist. But one of the things All right, I, I got to go, man. Fuck this cop <laughs> podcast. That's fuck this. That's it. I'm out. Not on Easter Monday, bitch. Not on Easter Monday. I didn't even know <laughs> there was an Easter Monday, but OK. But I, but I would say this. The reason why the story of Christ and his resurrection is so important is because Punches Pilot goes, yo, the Jews want you dead. I don't really give a fuck. All you got to do is say you're not king of the Jews. We can boom, 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 boom. And he goes, it's nah, the son. truth. Nah, son. Yeah. Nah. I yeah. Got and they go, yeah, but you're going to make me smoke you. By the way, if he said, nah, son, that would be the best Bible <laughs> be the, verse ever. He might have said that. <laughs> they probably should update the Bible. I mean, it wasn't written in nah, English son. to begin with, so why not update it? <laughs> Language is always transient. Nah, so let's be honest, nah. right? Yo, kid, I can't help you. <laughs> He's like, all you got to do is tell these dudes, yo, it's all cap. We, it's between you and me. Bong, bong. You can get out of here, yo. He's like, nah, nah I'm son. I'm the king of the uh, I'm the king of the Jews, my G, and they gonna have to deal with it. We might have to smoke you, John you know, like, six fifty two, and then you know, like, Jesus said, you gonna you, nah, gonna, you might get smoked, and and, and Pontius Pilate it, was like, if that's what it's gotta be. That's what it's gotta be. I got you gotta yo. We going we going go, we going out guns a blazing, right? Yo, and we all got our cross to bear because. Because he said, because that's the story. That's why the story is powerful. The story is powerful because it's truth above all else. True. Even, even in the face of death. And this is why there's a story. The story itself is so powerful. So, I mean, you know, the whole thing about, uh, you know, unconditional love and sacrifice might have something to do with it, too. Uh, you know. Um, yeah, I don't believe that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going too far in. We got. We'll have to have this conversation. Uh, yeah, that's that's some bullshit. Um, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Love is the only. Uh, love is always conditional. It's it's conditional. It's always conditional. And I would even. Yeah. I would even say. Oh, that's. But you, don't you understand that that is what everybody wants is unconditional love, man. But it doesn't so, you know, exist, though. It's it not does, fair. But, but wouldn't that make it that much more desirable? Come on now, wouldn't that make it that much more desirable if it doesn't exist? Yeah, yeah we're living, dog. I'm. I'm trying to live, and I want my life, and I want the people around me to live better. I want to be a beacon uh, to lift people up, and but I will not degrade. My my own my own morality for you or for nobody else yeah and okay I, and and so i and think I'm that's not, beautiful but i'm also not bending you're, you're kind of like jesus with a skull earring bro yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean I, I literally am going nah but i'm not i don't give a fuck about your that i'm not bending that but see, but, but, see, but, but see dante gravity, listen let me say this go ahead the thing that gives my words gravity is the truth the un 
unbending truth. I, I, I got to push back there. It's not just the truth. It's the intention in w- with which the words Gosh, are given. Right. So it's the truth with with intention. Yes. Because there are people who use the truth as a cudgel, and that is not cool. There are people that beat people with the truth and feel as though that they're justified because they're because telling the truth. The truth. Okay, yeah. so the truth isn't just something that is. <clears throat> but it's not. It's not true. It, it, that, I would. I would push back and say that's somebody that uses the truth to beat people down and not being truthful because the, there is an ulterior motive to do that. And that's that. what I said. And, what we're saying that, is say we are saying the same thing. But it's <laughs> not the truth, then. Okay, but see. All right, it's, I understand what you're saying. You understand but, but, it's a you're saying of that the, the, no, what you're saying is the truth is adulterated by their intention. Yes. and I and I'm and I'm cool with that. I, yeah. I, I, we're saying the same thing, I, and that's why I say yeah. w- with you that your intention of telling the truth is what makes it yes. good, yeah, and, and helpful, and you know. So I, I really think that, you know, as usual, you and I, we, we get into these right. conversations, and we really do agree with one another yes, all the time. <laughs> But I every say, conversation, by the way, people, it's, it's by the, the way, same. people, you yeah. have just witnessed every conversation me and Dante Absolutely. have ever Absolutely. had. It always goes just like this. We're it's saying not- the same thing, but we say it in different ways. I think we look through the same window, but, you know, uh, we see the same things, but we see them through different windows. You know what I mean? I, I really think, do. I think, and, and I'm going to be honest, I Go think ahead. we look through the same window, we see the same things, and then you compromise it because I think in a lot of ways you I, I think you you want to be liked more than me. Oh now that is the truth. Yeah. Listen and, but and see, you talk, notice that's, now that's, wait a minute. A, this is now listen some people would take offense to that if they didn't know who the fuck they were they would right. take offense to that. They'd be like what do you mean by that? No you're absolutely right. The two between the two of us right um you know, I am the person who part of my personality is I want reflection. I want what I give out to be reflected back to me. You are the person who that is immaterial to you. Yes. You do not care. Yes. So as, because of those two things, I certainly do want people to like me more than you do. The, the, where we are alike, though. Oh, yeah, because we see the truth as it is. Exactly. Where we are yeah. very much alike is that um, I don't compromise. I don't compromise. Step, I might even. I'm going as far as to say in life. In, exactly. I will never compromise myself right. to have you like me. I will never, right. ever betray my own beliefs, my own um, my own self-support, my own self-care, my own self-image. I will never compromise that so that I can be accepted or liked by somebody else. You know, so uh, but indeed, I do. I am a person that wants what I give out to be reflected back to me. You know, <laughs> I, I just I think my my intention. So like I'll I'll have I'll get a I'll do a consultation and I'll say I it'll be grossly obvious what the problem is, and I will tell the guy exactly what the problem is. And usually because it's uncomfortable, mm-hmm. they will go well. You know sometimes I I do that. I only do that once when they start hedging their bets because. And I go, and the first thing I say to them in the consultation, I go, stop. I go, I want you to understand something. Okay. You are calling me because you have a problem. And I want to help you navigate through this problem. I am not judging what you're doing. I'm not, there's no ethical judgment because a man who is willing a man who's willing to apologize when they're wrong, make adjustments and give a give forgiveness. If you're willing to give forgiveness and ask for forgiveness in the context of that, because we're all imperfect, there's you can't be a better human being than that. So the first thing I say is I, my job is to navigate you through my my problem, right? Through your problem. And I will not compromise that. Not for you or anybody else, but I also want you to understand there is no 
ethical value judgment about you as a human being because my point is I want you to be better and I want you to navigate through this problem. But on a base level, if there's no, if there's not extreme honesty about this, you will not get through this thing. You will not go through it because of the compromise. There will be left over. It'll be like the, that, that line in the dustpan when you, when you're trying to pick up the <laughs> dust and then some dudes sweep it under the refrigerator and some dudes Go get a they go get a piece of loose sleep, a piece of paper, and they pick it on an album cover and they get it all up. Huh? But sweeping it under the, the refrigerator doesn't matter until the refrigerator goes out of service and you gotta, well, you gotta call, move it. And yeah. then you gotta move it. And now you're rushing around trying to clean up uh, you know, like 10 years full of like mm. so the solution here, people, get a Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got to let's let's cut this and then we're going to put everything behind the we, everything we're going to do to Patreon. So what anything you got going on, you want to plug? Uh, what do I got going on? Let's see. Oh, I got, I'm doing an, a comedy special all on science, but we, we haven't nailed down the date and it's not going to happen to the fall. So okay. who cares? All right. All right. Who cares? Any we'll social media. You... Oh, yeah. Chuck Nice Comic everywhere. Okay. Chuck Nice Comic. All right. Harry, talk to me. <laughs> Uh, you can follow my stuff at Harry Turjanian, uh, all my social media, uh, TikTok, YouTube, all of it. And then I also do relationship consultations. Uh, email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Uh, you know, Google me, bitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, everything's the Dante Nero, Dante Nero, some version of that. You can get me. Um, uh, don't forget to sign up for the Patreon for www.patreon.com backslash manschool202. You support us there. We can keep this going and keep these conversations happening. Um, my YouTube page, Dante Nero, I'm putting a lot of information up on that. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante <laughs> do to sexual revolutions being podcasted? I love y'all. We're going to look on the Patreon side. Uh, hit us get up. Get your balls back. Um, let's go. Peace. <laughs>